Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill. This time we're going to take a look at a voltage regulator. In the past we've looked at linear voltage regulators. This one's a bit different. So let's go straight to the bench and see what it is we're going to look at. If you're a regular viewer of the channel you may recall seeing this device which is a, a curve tracer I bought from Banggood. It was on uh, two or three videos back. can't remember exactly when but I will put a link up the top for you uh, and I was amused at the time that uh, the semiconductors most of them have had their uh, identification um, numbers etched off them uh, which I always find ironic for the Chinese to do that they're um, very keen to copy anything they can get but uh, seem ever to not want people to copy them oh well there you go a little bit of hypocrisy I feel nonetheless um, the reason I've, I want to go for this is that in the top left corner here there's um, a, a package in a TO220 style um, with, with five legs there. Uh, here's a close-up of the board, you can see it at the top left, and here's a close-up of the device. And it's in proximity with the um, barrel jack input of the 24 volts. Um, so it's a voltage regulator, I think we can be fairly safe there. And it's highly likely it's an LM2575 um, uh, switching regulator. So even though it's had the uh, markings etched off it, if if we power up the um, the board uh, and measure the voltage on pin 2 there, which is the output, we get about 12 volts. So it's highly likely a LM2575 uh, 12 volt version. Um, so, the, you know, these are cheap and cheerful and not um, uh, anything particularly secret about that. So it does amuse me that they spent time and money etching, uh, removing the... the um, the number enough there. Anyway, not that that matters. Uh, so that's what we're going to look at. So let's start by looking at, um, at what uh, the data sheet etc has to say about this uh, particular device. The LM2575 then, uh, as previously mentioned, uh, the version I'm going to use is in a TO220 style package. Uh, other, other package styles are available as ever if you're going to mess about with these kind of things have a good look at the um, the data sheets they contain far more information than uh, than you'll get from this video um, so why bother with them um, with one of these switching regulators well firstly they're more efficient than linear regulators um, and because of that more efficient equals they generate less heat um, obviously waste less power so if battery life's a concern they're obviously better from that perspective uh, if you don't want to, to put large heat sinks on again um, that's uh, also an advantage um, up to 37 volts output and up to 40 volts input now that those two figures are pretty much the same as the LM317 which is an adjustable um, uh, linear regulator however of course the uh, two points at the top will apply to the linear regulator that it, this is more efficient than that and obviously we generate less heat uh, and the the 2575 has thermal and current limit protection okay so what's in the case then well here's a, a diagram an internal diagram taken from the uh, from the data sheet and uh, it's a five pin package so the voltage goes in at pin one and comes out of pin two and pin three is ground and pin four sorry pin five is um gives you the ability to control the output to turn it on or off using um uh, logic level so pin, pin five is an active low input if you like uh, it's bar on so if if we tie pin five low the regulator will be on if we take that to ttl high it'll be off so you've got the ability to control the regulator should you wish um, for the purposes of this video I'm just going to tie that to ground and uh, finally um, pin 4 is feedback which actually measures the um, voltage output and that's what does the um, uh, the comparison and therefore um, allows the regulator to make its adjustments as, uh, as time progresses okay so let's have a look at um, the kind of circuit we're going to use with that uh, this is taken pretty much from the from the data sheet the only addition there is the 1N4001 diode there is half wave rectification for my AC input and uh, perhaps note the unusual arrangement for the uh, 220 microfarad capacitors and the 
uh, 1N5819 diode, they all go to the same earth point. That's really just to make the point that you need to think about the arrangements of leads if you're going to be uh, doing this on a, a printed circuit board. That matters. It needs to be um, fairly close together, not too many long uh, runs. So that's what the data sheet says anyway. Um, I can't really do that on a breadboard, so I've just attempted to make the most compact arrangement I possibly can. Now the 1N5819 is a Schottky diode, um, it's not just any old diode, so just be aware of that. Um, relatively easy to get hold of though. And then we've got a voltage divider across the output with a 1K resistor to ground, but then the 10K resistor at the top is actually a pot um, that allows us to, uh, to control um, the voltage. So uh, what's that look like on the breadboard? Well, yep, it looks a bit like this. I've just marked up the um, 2575 and the inductor for you, so it's fairly obvious. Um, I've actually got the, the 2575 mounted vertically. Here's another picture of it. And uh, I've just spread the pins out so they uh, match the pitch of the um, the breadboard. And uh, otherwise you're just seeing the very, the very top of the chip there. OK, that's the arrangements. Let's go and have a look at it on the bench. OK. Um, here's the arrangement set out on the bench then. There's a couple more things on here which uh, uh, weren't on the uh, photograph you've seen just now, We're on the slides there. Just didn't want to overcomplicate it. Essentially what we've got is on the blue and orange wires here we've got about 24 volts AC coming in. Uh, that's the uh, halfway rectification diode. The rest of the circuit is as described and then here on the output We've just got an LED with a fairly high value, about 3K current limiting resistor. This is so I don't burn out the, the LED with um, of something as high as, uh, as 10 volts. So um, that's the 1K resistor, that's the trimmer pot and that's the inductor down there. Shotty diode is hidden down there, or shot key sorry. So let's just uh, see what happens when we adjust the potentiometer. So you can see we can lower it right down, we can get down to about we're just under 1.3 volts. Obviously the LED isn't lit at that point. Uh, and then we can go right up, if I turn it as far as it'll go, about 13.5 volts. And if you think about the fact you've got 24 volts AC halfway rectified, yeah, that's, um, that's pretty good to get 13.5 um, volts out of there. So there we go. Let's have a look. Um, how that appears on the traces. So I've got two um, traces attached on the scope here for you to see. Yellow trace is the AC waveform going in and that's at uh, 20 volts per division so you can see we have got that um, about 24 volts as described. Uh, and the blue trace uh, is in DC coupling and that's the DC output taken off the, uh, off the LED there on that uh, little orange jumper. So if I just do some adjustment again. You can see the blue line moves up and down in line with um, the voltage adjustment. Um, as you might expect, nothing uh, too surprising there. If we now, uh, if we zoom in on the blue line, I won't mess about doing that on this scope particularly, but here's a screen grab and you can see at the highest possible, well the fastest time base and the most sensitive um, a Y amplifier input here, we can see that there is some noise. There's roughly five spikes per um, per division there. Uh, so let's now have a look at a screen wrap taken off the signaling scope. That's obviously got a much uh, much greater sensitivity. And you can see here we've got um, uh, it's about 100, just over 180 millivolts. The spikes are, and uh, the frequency is about. 47.6 kilohertz according to the two cursors. So yes, there is noise. Now to get that level of noise, uh, I had to add, uh, well, I, I set the output to 10 volts and I put some high wattage resistors across here and those, that, that noise measurement was taken at about uh, 100 milliamps. And now, unfortunately, this is the, uh, the only inductors I have. And when I tried to 
I, I was hoping to do the measurements at about 500 milliamps. Unfortunately, the inductor uh, wasn't up to handling um, that kind of current here, so I had to do them at about 100 milliamps. So I think you can assume that yeah, the more current you draw, the more noise you're going to get. Um, so yeah, you may need to filter that. That shouldn't be too difficult. Um, but yeah, it does it does produce noise that you obviously wouldn't get from a, a linear regulator. So there you go. That's the um, LM2575 uh, uh, adjustable voltage regulator. The LM2575 switching voltage regulator then. Hope you've found that uh, useful, uh, maybe even interesting. Um, and as long as you bear in mind the potential uh, noise on the output and take precautions as is appropriate, I'm sure uh, uh, that's potentially a very useful device. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing and look forward to seeing you on the next video.